Bent Vent, a program by and for the gay and lesbian community. I'm Chris White. And I'm Vivian Ward. Tonight we're going to be looking at minority groups and how they claim to face ongoing problems of discrimination within our community. This has certainly been a topic of hot discussion of late and tonight we are joined by Michael Mifsud who is a founding member of SEAL which is a southern European and gay and lesbian group which was formed in the mid 80s. We also have Ron Johnson who is from the Curry Gay Support and Social Group. David Voom, who was one of the founding members of Silk, and Vic Perry, who is a cross-cultural worker with the BAC. Um, Michael, I'll throw to you first. What um, exactly uh, uh, defines a minority group or classifies it? I guess it's a common, some common shared aspect of our identity that we link with each other, whether it be our sexualities, we get together as a, as a gay community, or our ethnicity as we have so many different ethnic communities, I guess, within Australian society. It um, can be based on our gender, there are many women's groups, many divisions. I guess we're experiencing uh, a period even in, in the gay community where uh, people are defining themselves as different groups within that, which mm. reflects what we are outside as well, because we're fairly complex personalities and have different aspects to our, mm. our, our, our identity, I guess. And why do, why do you feel we need uh why is there a need for support groups within the gay community, you know, ethnically based support groups? Well, I think when, you're an, when, you, when you are an ethnic minority within, say, the, the gay community, there are a lot of issues that, need, that you need to address and you need to resolve even for yourself before, I guess, bringing them into the forum of the gay community. Um, it's a whole reconciliation of your, your culture, your ethnic culture, as well as your sexuality. I mean, predominantly we're coming out into a, a fairly Western North American uh, culture in many ways. I mean, for us, that can be just as alien as as our immigration to Australia, our, our acculturation into the gay scene can be just as as different and as strange because it's largely very much a California sort of based culture, which has taken on different forms and its own flavours in different places. But it is still a reinforcement of the dominant culture that we are as immigrants or as other ethnic minorities trying to live with and, and move within. So I think we, there are, there are many countless issues around that. that that um, we feel are important to address. We, we spoke before about this tendency to lump all Southern Europeans into one mm -hmm. group. Is that still prevalent in, in Australia? I think so. I mean, there are even there are some interesting things that are being written. I'm thinking of an article by um, a Melbourne woman called Greek or Italian. It's that whole thing when someone's been described and I think, oh, Greek or Italian. Mm -hmm. you know, same thing, same thing. It's a, it's a whole part of that period. I suppose when the first wave of non-Anglo-Celtic migration to Australia happened, I. I think what happened is that people saw it as one mass of, of sort of aliens, of these foreigners, these strange people who spoke differently, behaved differently. And it was a fairly natural reaction at a time when Australia had been, you know, had the white Australia policy for so long to see this influx of, of new immigrants as one cohesive whole mass of strangeness, I suppose. Over the years as people have become more familiar, they differentiate. And that, I think that's a natural progression with people's understanding. Now, in the 1990s, Vic, do you really think that the differences are so great that it warrants these types of support groups? Uh, they're still there. It's a, a, the Italians have been out for quite a while, so uh, the needs do vary between the groups, and that's the way I sort of look at them, uh, and touching on the same sort of thing, of waves of immigration. Uh, you can see in, in relation to that, you've got uh, Italians and Greeks that have been out for quite a while. So in the uh, Italian and... Uh, and gay group and the Greek and gay group, uh, just about every member of the group uh, was born here uh, with their parents coming out in the 50s. So uh, their need uh, to uh, be a part of a peer support group isn't as great as, for instance, uh, Asians who have come out much later. Um, and probably just about all the uh, uh, Asian gay men in the group are born overseas. Uh, same with the Spanish speaking, they're, they're part of a later immigration wave. So. Uh, just about all of them have been born overseas, so their need uh, to be a part of the peer support group is a lot greater. Um, and certainly the barriers that uh, uh, are certainly greater in those groups as well uh, compared to, say, the Italians and the Greeks. Um, language can be a barrier uh, with people who have come out uh, more recently. Um, and also their ties with their cultural background is a lot stronger with uh, Asians, Spanish speaking, than it would be for say Italians or Greeks. Uh, especially with Italians, uh, the, uh, a lot of it's just lost. Um, the parents that have migrated out in the 50s have lost it, so um, uh, there isn't a huge need there. 
but uh, there, there's still a need. Um, there's a lot of uh, gay men and, uh, and lesbians that, um, especially of the, of the later uh, immigration waves, that uh, do find a need to be a part of a peer support group. Now, David, um, you're part of this new wave, I mm -hmm. guess, then, being of Asian descent. Um, yeah. Now, we're hearing that these support groups are, are supposed to be just that supportive, mm -hmm. but what support do you actually get from Silk? The support that, that the, the support is through um, being in an environment where you can, where you're meeting with other people who understand where you're coming from without you having to um, explain to them what what you mean. It's it's a cultural support, a sense of of similarity, of familiarity, of having being able to understand the sense of humour, um, of of knowing that um, we're all coming from the same background and, and having the same sorts of experiences so that it's, it, it, it builds up a sense of belonging, which, which I think w we need. Um, also, with the way that, I mean, what everyone's been saying is true, but that seems to put a lot of the focus on minority groups themselves. Um, on, on migrants to to adapt to assimilate, whereas it's not not always that's that's not how how it's not that simple, because I, I guess with the comparison with with the earlier migrants and the later wave of migrants, the needs have become um, less uh, because society has come to recognise um, earlier migrant groups and to recognise their needs and be able to fit and provide for those needs, whereas newer migrant groups don't get that sort of forum or, or that recognition, um, and that's something that comes with time. But the, the onus isn't only on minority groups to form support groups um, to, to meet those needs. I mean, the, the community and the society itself has an obligation or responsibility to try to meet us halfway. Um, so the support that we get, aside from, from the individual type of psychological um, well-being, um, comes also from the fact that we, we, we find that we're not alone and we are able to um, make use of, of the collective power that we have in, in meeting together to try to change and adapt the way society views us as, as Asian men um, and, and to try to force and advocate for larger organisations, community groups and community organisations to recognise those, those needs and to provide the resources to meet them. Now Vic, do you um, find that a lot of young people especially, I'm assuming, may suppress their cultural background to, as, to a high degree as possible when they first come out and then come to the support groups? when they're trying to re-establish their roots? Or? Some, yeah, uh, some may do that because uh, everybody wants to be accepted. Uh, whatever uh, uh, we go through in life, we want to be accepted by our peers. So um, in order to uh, be accepted by uh, peers in, in the gay and lesbian community, they're, they're going to um, be as, as uh, I suppose, sort of follow the norm as much as possible. And, uh, and it may not. It may mean that uh, they can't express and, and, and talk about their cultural background as much as they want to. So they might suppress that and uh, and sort of be a part of their peers and be accepted. And then, of course, that's part of the struggle is they want to identify with their cultural background. Um, and the the way the, the support group or peer support group benefits uh, people is that it's a safe space where you can do both. You can be. Italian and gay, or Asian and gay, uh, uh, and it's accepted in that group. Um, whereas, if uh, you're in the, out there on the on the gay and lesbian scene, you may be able to be gay and express being gay, but you can't be Greek or Italian mm. um, because it's just not that well accepted. And of course, at home, you can be Italian or Greek or Asian, but you can't be gay. Um, so. Yeah. Um, Ron, do you find it hard to relate to other gays and lesbians who aren't of the same cultural background or do you find that other gays and lesbians have trouble relating to you because you're of a different cultural background? Well, uh, going back to what Vic said earlier, and uh, like my parents were born here, same as my ancestors, and uh, we look at it and we are a minority within a minority within a minority. 
because of the way their population is. And when we start looking around, we start looking at the, uh, the different cultural values that we have and bringing them out in uh, the society does make it hard. But then we've had our cultural uh, background ripped away from us. So when we do meet, you know, we uh, look at each other and we take out uh, other people as in saying, um, we know you're uh, indigenous, you know, doesn't matter what colour you are, uh, some of us are uh, maybe even light skin or even white, but they, we still identify as being indigenous and coming out and um, mixing with other societies or other cultural <coughs> groups uh, does play a big role. And uh, it's kind of like, it's very hard to put it down to words sometimes, as in like uh, when we meet, we are a group. And as David said earlier, uh, we don't have to explain who we are or what we are. Or mix. I was just um, interested to know what, what similarities you might see between um, gay Aboriginal Australians and gay people from other ethnic minorities um, within Australia. Well, we and don't do class ourselves as being ethnic because I don't think we can be ethnic in our own country. No. Okay. Um, the similarities are the same uh, as in we do to understand each other when we meet as a group, but when we meet other minority groups, it's uh, like a there is a barrier because basically we are all different as in features, as in uh, colour. And when we uh, look at each other like we've been uh, assimilated into a society that has torn away our religion and our culture and our laws and we have been forced to believe in, uh, we like to say this, a, a, a white society. And it's very hard sometimes for our people to identify with other minority groups. Yeah, we understand. We're getting a, um, getting a wind-up call, so we're going to have to go to a break now, but we'll uh, come back to this as soon as we get back. Welcome back to Vent Vent. Uh, we're discussing the uh, various differences between ethnic and cultural minorities within the gay community in Australia. Michael, before we went to break, you were just about to make a point. Oh, just, just talking about, um, I guess, rela relating, relating between different minority groups and relating with the gay community. I thought what was interesting is maybe one of the value, the, the greatest value I see in the organisation of ethno-specific groups at the moment is in a way to force the larger community, in this context it's the gay community, to, to start meeting us part of the way. Because every day we, we deal with the dominant culture. We've, we've grown up in a, as, Im, as immigrants, whether we're first or second generation, we've gone through a sort of process of acculturation of adapting. Um, I still think by and large in the outside community, and I'm, I, I must say it's probably the same within the gay community too, that there is a degree of acceptance with fairly superficial things of our cultures. Um, food is okay. Some influence of fashion. We get to more fundamental differences. If you talk about maybe viewpoints, view of the world, about life, about politics, that I still think there's a lot of resistance to a difference there. People are afraid of a difference. They're afraid to acknowledge that there's a difference to maybe open up to the ideas, to make, I guess, ideas within different minority groups within the scene a part of the larger as well, to, st to start to influence and shape that as well, for us to be involved in that discourse too and have some influence and effect on the way, on the way it proceeds and the way it goes. Because by and large, we're still fairly... I think fairly voiceless even within the gay community. Yes, yeah, so I was going to throw that open. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking that's a really important role for the group as well, or for, for a reason why the group exists, not only as a peer support group to get people together, mm -hmm. but uh, it's an educational thing as well. It's, it's for the group to be a, a collective power to work together and organise together to educate the wider community uh, about. Uh, being about their sexuality and about their lifestyle and the more that people know about it because as we all know ignorance just uh, 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 that ignorance is the main reason why people have a fear of things so mm. um, the more that that wider community whether it be the Italian or Greek or Asian community know about uh, gays and lesbians the more accepting they will be of, of their lifestyle 
and that just reduces the discrimination all around. And the role there, the educational role there for the group is also in the wider gay and lesbian community and it's teaching the gay and lesbian community about uh, cultural things and not just food or fashion or music.